to share our music with you uh, tonight. And thank you for thank you for sharing your evening with us. connection to the culture known as the Oyo Empire in, uh, in Nigeria. It's a classical culture that had its heyday in the 17th and 18th centuries. A uh, really big empire with a really uh, well-structured community and a really well-structured sort of belief system. And that belief system informs the music that we're playing. In fact, what you just heard was a series of three um, musical salutations, musical offerings to three uh, gods and goddesses in a pantheon, a sort of a Greco-Roman-like pantheon of gods and goddesses that are called Orishas. And um, what we are doing, what Argo Musical has always done, is we have taken great pains to celebrate the instrument that we have behind us here. 
and you're going to hear that shortly. This instrument is called the Benimbao, and these instruments are called the Bata, and this project that we've been working on for the last two years is a neologism, which is connecting the, the, two, the two names of these instruments together, Benimbata. Should we say the names of the instruments together just so we can remember this? This is called the Benimbao, and this is called the Bata. Wow. Okay, and you're going to hear us talk a little bit more about each family in turn, but we're going to play some more music for you now, and here's what we're going to play. So it's a game of memory. Are you ready? <laughs> <laughs> we're going to play this very same music that we just played for you, but we're going to play them with a different, a different musical voice. We're going to play them with the bit of bows, and then we're going to tell you a little bit more about what we're doing, and then we're going to keep going kind of throughout this sequence. Here we go. We will definitely field questions at any point during the concert, too, so feel free to make this a conversation. And, because this is also dance music, if anyone feels like getting up on your feet and shaking it, you can do that too. <laughs>
So what's really special about these instruments is that they're string instruments that are also percussion instruments. It's a percussed string instrument, so we really get the best of both worlds playing this instrument. It's very much like a single string piano or a single string guitar, and in fact it is a kind of a progenitor of basically all string instruments around the world because it's one of the oldest instruments in the plant, on the planet. Let me show you something. This is an instrument uh, that was made by one of my teachers in Brazil. Can everyone hear me okay if I yeah. 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 So This is an instrument that one of my teachers made for me in Brazil. His name is Mestre Vlamir dos Santos. He is a capoeira master. Capoeira is a martial art, a Brazilian body game that comes from, that also has African roots, just like this instrument. And, um, and this instrument is played almost exclusively with that game in Brazil. Everyone, whereas, whereas here I am explaining what this instrument is, in Brazil I wouldn't have to because everyone knows this instrument in Brazil. It's super common and super famous for its connection to the capoeira. And what I was going to show you was, this is, it's a really simple instrument. Right. What, does it, what does it look like, actually? Let me remind you of the bowl. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Ethnomusicologists like to ask the sort of unanswerable chicken and egg question of which came first, the musical bow or the hunting bow. So this comes right off. And in fact, if I were to take one of my sticks and kind of set it up, right, it could actually be. <laughs> it would actually, no, I would never. Um, uh, but, but, uh, but I did, oh, I'm sorry. This is called music. Right, so, um, uh, okay. So this is a this is a bow, and if I want to turn my hunting bow into a musical bow, then by putting this board up, up along the staff of the instrument, I suddenly have a voice. Right? And if I close that voice on my body, it's quiet. And if I open it, you see what makes this musical instrument really. It's not. 100% unique, but it's a, it's pretty rare for musical instruments to have a mouth um, that doesn't face the audience. For example, if I were a trumpet player, you would see the bell of my instrument. I would be talking to you from my trumpet. If I were playing guitar, the tone of the guitar would be facing you so that you could hear more clearly. But interestingly, when one plays the bin about, you literally open and close the circuit of vibration on your own body. So it's a very intimate experience. And the good news is that at every single art music hall concert, <coughs> We always invite audience after the show to come and play this instrument. Mm -hmm. So everyone who wants to can come on up and play this instrument before we're done. If we can. How's that sound? Mm -hmm. Cool. Cool. Good. Mm -hmm. All right. So the way that this works then is that you close the instrument on your body, and then when you open it, so you can get a kind of a vibrato effect. Yeah. yeah. So that, that's a kind of an energy spike. <coughs> Good. So that kind of explains a little bit about that. And then the other thing that I was going to say, because you asked about range, is that when the cord goes around both the staff and the wire, it divides that single string into two unequal parts. And so when I put the instrument, the, the board here, it's an octave, it's actually two octaves, because mm -hmm. if I took out my magic, uh, my, my magic uh, adjustable unit ruler here and measured this ruler, measured this space, the distance between the, the bridge and the end of the instrument, let's call this unit one, right? It's one unit of length. This length is four times that length, and the, re and the musical result is, uh, is two octaves. Um, and if you'll take note here, we have three batakrams, but we have no less than eight musical bows behind us. And each chord is at a slightly different height along the length of the instrument. And that's how we go. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. The further up we go, that's nice. Two, one. It's a major third. 
and ended up. I go a little further.
over to my colleague Jean Christophe, and I'd like to also take just a second to introduce the, at least the gentleman on the bandstand, um, and then we'll. In, yeah. Okay. okay, so these are my wonderful colleagues. Uh, this is Jean-Christophe Leroy. This is Jonah Payne. Christian Bacher. And my name again is Gregory Beyer. And I'd like to turn this microphone over to my colleague, Jean, who is an expert in the instruments that we just played for you, the Bata drums. He's going to tell you a little bit more about them and a little bit more about how we're making this music and maybe what to listen to, how to guide the ear as we, as we play this so it doesn't, so, so that you have something to hold on to. Jean, you want to talk a little bit about sure. that? Can I do it without a mic? Can you yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Okay, great. So, good evening, everybody, and thanks for having us. Um, like Greg said, these drums are called Bata drums. And they're, they're a family of drums. You can see they all look like the same type of drum. You can tell they're all related, right? But they're all different sizes. And they all have different functions, the same way we do in our family. Uh, my drum is called the Iya, and it's the mother drum. Greg's drum is called the Totole, and Jonah's drum is called the Okonkolo. So Greg's drum functions kind of like the father in the family, and Jonah's drum functions kind of like a child in the family. Who do you think's in charge? Mom! Mom is in charge. So I use this drum to speak. So I'm using both sides of the drum. This side, this side is called the mouth, and you mouth. This side is called the cha-cha. So I use this drum to tell my family what to do and when to do it. I need money. And they must obey. They must obey. So, and I also hold conversations. I can hold conversations with the father figure of the family. Of course, when I initiate a conversation, he has to you know, stop watching TV and respond. In the meantime, there's a constant flurry of activity over here for the child the family, whose lives, whose life our lives revolve around. Yeah. Right? So I'm going to give you an idea of how that works musically. Um, Jonah's going to play a pattern that's going to be a, a steady timekeeping pattern around which everything we play revolves, okay? So we'll start with that. Father has multiple jobs. Am I right? So his left, this drum is a little bit different than the other two in the sense that one of his hands has to do one thing, the other hand has to do a separate thing. When I'm not, yeah, but he's not using both hands together the way Jonah and I are. So his left hand has to play an asinato that fills in the space of Jonah's pattern.
So, John is playing with a single stick. Um, this is playing the equivalent of the Piaf, the mother drum, on the bit of And he speaks with, she speaks with one voice. And as John pointed out, my role, uh, father, is going to be a is, is, is double, right? I'm an intersection of some of the oscillating or rhythmic patterns that the child is playing while responding to John at the same time. And when we first started working on this project two years ago, we all were playing with one stick only because that's actually the traditional way that you play a musical bow. This double stick um, technique is a modern kind of adaptation. It's a, like what, what people in the classical world would call an extended technique. Um, and the reason why we started experimenting with that was because so often, in particular on my instrument, the two voices speak simultaneously, and I was finding that I had to choose one or the other. And so when I when we started messing around with both sticks, we all pretty much instantly agreed that the sound of the instrument itself was much richer when you simultaneously intone both sides of the wire. And so instead of doing something like this, I'll give you an example. Um, Uh, are either Christian or Muslim, 
and uh, and so they they look at this historical religious practice as kind of a mythology. And and what's wonderful about reading up about this this uh, practice is that a lot of the stories um, of the various gods and goddesses are very reminiscent of the stories of the, of the Greco-Roman tradition. And as if any of you know any of those stories of you know Zeus and Neptune and such, you, you know that there was a lot of um, there, there was a lot of misbehaving going on. <laughs> um, the gods and goddesses, you know, reflect the various imperfections of the humans that, that sort of began to be created over time. Right? And so, in this sense, this is sort of like an African, not not an equivalent, but certainly almost like a parallel system in a way. And so that's it is it is that that is the creation of this music. So, order means order, second means dry. When the drums play by themselves without accompanying song. That's what we do, right? And in, in a complete series, and I don't know how many participations if we play the entire series, but there are actually 22 um, auditions days in the, in, the, in the series. And so far we've played seven. Um, first we played three, then we played four, and now we're gonna play the second group of seven. And even though it's the largest group uh, that we will present for you tonight in numeric terms, it goes by pretty quickly. Um, so it doesn't last as, as long as our sound. Would you like to know their names and what they stand for? Of course. <laughs> so we're going to start with someone named Osun. Osun is um, also considered to be a warrior. And the first three uh, deities that we played for you at the very beginning of the show are considered the three warriors the rock that John mentioned, the king, the god of iron, and Oshosi, the god of the hunt. Their brother, his name is Osun, and Osun is the guard, so kind of like looking at the watchtower, and, and, and any evil spirits come around, it's his job to tell his father, to lose his father. The next baby that we're going to play for you, his name is Obatala. And Obatala uh, was given the charge by Oludumare. Oludumare is considered the supreme spirit beyond the realm of, of humans being able to communicate with him. So that, that is why the Oluja statistics are sort of intermediaries between human beings and the supreme deity. Oludumare said to Obatala one day, I am here. You are the eldest. You are the wisest. I will give you the keys to the universe. Please go and create the earth and create the people on the earth. He never got around to the first part of that job. So when he finally woke up from a very from a state of um, uh, inebriation, <laughs> he, uh, he, he got around to creating human beings. And so Obatala is considered the creator of the this new system. Um, after a lot, we will then go to meet the elder brother of an actual historical king of the Oyo Empire. That king's name was Chango, and his elder brother was named Dada. And Dada took care of young Chango when he was born. So Dada is considered to be a kind and tender spirit, someone who looks out for his younger brother. My brother's keeper, so to speak. Then, um, because of this instrument being played often in solo context in Africa by shepherds and people who tend to their flock, uh, tend to their herd animals, which by and large work are cattle and grazing animals, um, the next spirit that we will encounter and we play music for is someone named Oge, who is the spirit of the cattle or spirit of the herd animal. After that, we will visit the spirit of the volcano, Akani, and then we will visit the spirit of the diviner. Um, someone who, through numeric and mathematical ways, has a way of speaking directly to uh, to the powers that control the future and the destiny of all of all humankind. That uh, that spirit is known as uh, Orumila or Oruma or Ifa. And finally, we will play um, a little praise song to the earth itself, the guardian of all of the farmers on the planet. His name is Orisha Oko. So those are the seven: Osun, Obatala, Dada, and Oge. Uh, Agayu, Ifa, and Odisho. You're not going to quiz us, are you? <laughs> <laughs> we may quiz each other, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I promise there will be no pop quizzes. Um, but, uh, but, we just, but that certainly doesn't stop the, that doesn't negate the invitation for you to come and play the instruments oh. at the end of the evening. So maybe at that point. <laughs>
for joining us. <laughs> uh, have the right idea. Thank you so much, gang. Fun to see you do that.
you're 100% correct about that. So. <laughs> yeah. I, I Charge your extra. <laughs> um, it, are, are your songs the same every time, or does the spirit move you in different ways each time? Yeah, that's a wonderful, that's a wonderful question. Um, so there is improvisation in what we do, but it's very limited to certain people and certain times in the, in the music. Um, because this is religious music, because it's sacred music, it's kind of a liturgy, right? It's, it's a body of, of, of musical language and thought that was developed more than a couple of hundred years ago and has been handed down generation after generation after generation of player. Um, and, and has been codified in a way that uh, that is that you know if any one of us were to go uh, to play with a different ensemble, there might be a few things that are different, but that, but it would largely be um, it would largely be consistent. Mm -hmm. That said, there are some moments of opportunity for me playing the father drum, and in this case, Christian playing the child the child's drum, where we can have small elements of improvisation. But we. Well, what we do improvisationally pales in comparison to the role of the mother again. And John, you want to speak a little bit about that? Sure. Okay. Um, so, you know, as I mentioned before, I give them musical signals and tell them what we're going to play and when we're going to play it, how fast or slow, how loud or soft. It's all based on what I play on my drum. And then once we're playing, you notice every, every piece we play has like different sections, right? You can feel the transitions. I'm the one who tells them, okay, we're moving from here to here. We're moving from here to here. So that, in addition to each, comp each composition, has its own sort of inherent melody that's made up from the three mouths of our drums, the three end -y. So when I'm improvising, I have to make sure that I still always imply that basic melody, because my job is to play that melody for the day that I'm playing for at that moment, right? So I can then make variations and add things and subtract things a little bit as long as I'm still doing my job, which is to play that melody for that day. My other job is to steer the ship. So, you know, okay guys, we're gonna go over here. Okay guys, we're gonna go over here. So if I'm improvising, if I play something that kinda of sounds like the signal to turn left, but I don't mean to say that, what's gonna happen is one person might turn left while the rest of the people are going straight. Imagine if there was a car and one wheel turned left. Right? That's what's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. So it's my job to re be responsible in how I improvise and what I do and still do, you know, fulfill my duty of steering the ship properly. At the same time, they have to know the melody of the, of the piece we're playing, the day we're playing for, so that they can tell whether I'm telling them to do something or whether I'm just you know, adding to the overall feel of the music. So, yes, we improvise. That's the <laughs> <laughs> But there's a, real, there's a real structure we have to adhere to, so it requires a lot of knowledge and responsibility about the, the music. <laughs> and where in the world did you learn that? Uh, I learned it in a combination. I mean, I learned it from masters of this tradition. This tradition comes from, this version that we're playing comes from Cuba. It's a tradition that began in what was the Oyo Empire, which is now Nigeria, and it was brought to Cuba as a result of the transatlantic slave trade. And it's kind of evolved into its own version, the Cuban version of Bata and the religion is called Santeria in Cuba. Um, I so I've gone straight to masters of this tradition to learn the music, and I've been working on it for man, a long time. Probably, I mean, I've been working on Cuban music since the early '90s. That gives you an idea. This particular style of music, probably for about 20 years. So I've gone back and forth to Cuba a lot, and then traveled around the states or whatever. I hear of a master who's going to be in an area near me. I make sure I get over to that place and find that guide and learn everything I can at that moment. Okay. Did somebody originally record this music and that's how you, or did you just get it firsthand? Well, so for everything we're playing, when we're just playing the drums, I got most of my, I mean, it's a balance. I do study recordings. There are recordings out there. Uh -huh. um, but to really understand the music, you have to go to a master to explain you how it works and learn it face to face. Because this is an oral tradition, so there's, there are now some books that you can learn from, but that's not the way this tradition was passed on. It's so it's important to adhere to the, 
like methods of transmission of a, of a tradition if you want to really be a part of that tradition. So I try to use all of the above, but the most important thing is face to face with people who learned it the same, you know, in a traditional manner. As far as when, when the way we apply it to Bambao, we're the first ones doing that. So, that's true. so there's, uh, we're proud of ourselves. <laughs> but it's not about that. I'll let Greg explain the concept there. We, the subtitle of this project is called Illuminating the Tree. When you walk into a school of capoeira, which is the martial arts that is, that, that, um, that is sort of like the home uh, and the traditional space for the big about the musical bow, the first thing that any teacher will ask you if they don't know who you are already is, who's your teacher? The, the family and family-like lineages that are created by, virtual, uh, by virtue of oral, oral traditions, be they physical or musical or both, is critically important to um, traditional cultures all over the world. And African traditional cultures are no different. And Afro-Brazilian or Afro-Cuban traditions are no different because one of the things that we do um, and that we feel is important here is that you know, even though it's very clear that none of the four of us have direct uh, African ancestry in, in terms of DNA, we all feel very powerfully connected to various African musical traditions because we're percussionists, because we're drummers, right? And the origin of the drum is, is, is mother, is Iya, Africa. And so we, we, we respect that and we, we honor that. And what, the way we sort of see ourselves as, you know, musicians at this moment in time and this place in time in, in the Americas um, is that we are part of a really large river of tradition. And we are as drops of water in that, in that river. And for us, you know, as, as we all know, being you know, here in Illinois, the quality of our water matters, right? The quality of the river matters. The health of the river ensures that life goes on and life moves on. And so it is with music and art. And so, yes, we are the first people potentially making this, this musical language come to life on these instruments. But it's really not a pat in the back as much as it is honoring all of the beautiful music and all of the, all of the beautiful human experience that has made this music happen in the first place. And if we do our part to feel connected to that deeply and sincerely, then when we present that to, to audiences like yourselves, hopefully we all can build a little bit of community around those ideas and around that, around that sentiment. And so to that end, um, you know, we're really happy. We're really genuinely happy to be here tonight in uh, in Bishop Hill, a city, a, a city here in Illinois that, that we've never been to before, and, and so happy that you're here too. Some of you have come here regularly, some of you are, here, are also here for the first time. It's delightful to get to know you, and we can thank the Eclipse for that. <laughs> <laughs> you, are, you are fellow sojourn, sojourners along the, along the, the road pathway, right? Finding joy in every moment and every day. And, and so thank you all for being here. Thank you for sharing your evening with us. Thank you, John Taylor. Woo! We wouldn't be here also if it weren't for the Illinois Arts Council Agency. We are proud members of what's called the Illinois Arts Council Agency Arts Tour roster. And um, we are, through that, through that project that's state funded, we um, are connected with presenters such as John. Um, to come out and play. So we are Illinois artists playing for Illinois communities. And nothing makes us more proud or happy than to be a part of that. So, so once again, with gratitude, thank you so much for being here. We're gonna continue now by playing another set of deities. And you'll recall that <coughs> um, earlier I spoke about the, the older brother of a certain, a certain historical figure, Chango. Now we are going to play the music of Chango. Um, he will be preceded by uh, the spirit of twins Interestingly, Nigeria happens to be one of the places in the world where the incidence of the birth of twins happens really frequently. Um, and so um, what's interesting about the, the music that we're about to play for you that represents those twins is that we're playing one rhythm, um, but, but it will feel one way at first, and then it will gradually morph to feel a different way. And it's the same rhythm but with it, what, we, what musicians call a different subdivision of the same pulse. The pulse will stay the same, but we will pull the notes 
from, from one location inside of the beat and to the other. See if you can't perceive that. It's sort of like, um, you, you remember the two faces of Janus, right? Or this idea of twins. It's, it's like, it's the same rhythm, it's the same kind of spirit, but it's, it literally has two faces. Once we've done that, then we will play for Chango. Chango is the king of the Oyo Empire and an actual historical figure who was reified or deified when he, when he passed. He was the keeper of the drums. He was an excellent dancer. And so this music that we're about to play for you is some of the most virtuosic music that we will play all night for you, the music of Chango. Music of Chango will be uh, followed by uh, the first two feminine deities in the, in the procession, um, Ye Wa, who, um, was the keeper of winds and storms, and she will be followed by Oya, who is currently the deity of winds and storms. And at one point in time, Oya and Yewa had a had a deal, and Oya said, "Oh, Yewa, come here. You would love to be, you would love to be the keeper of these cemeteries. They're such beautiful spaces." And Yewa was like, "Oh yeah, okay, I'll do that." And then she ended up being the keeper of the cemeteries. So, <laughs> so, so the order goes: Ibei. Chang'o, Yewa, the keeper of cemeteries, an agitated spirit. You'll, you'll hear that in the music. And then a very slow wind, uh, the music of Oya. <laughs>
one person you haven't heard from yet tonight is Mr. Jonah Payne, and he's been playing these beautiful instruments over here all night long. So we'd like to give him a chance to tell you a little bit about what he's up to over here. Sure, yeah. So these uh, instruments over here we haven't talked about yet. This is sort of a third uh, sort of family group of instruments on the stage. These are called Kashi Shi. Uh, they're also Afro-Brazilian instruments, just like uh, Bear Mass. So, uh, they also come from the same regions of Africa, present in Nigeria. So they uh, made their way to Brazil and are actually commonly played uh, traditionally when people play the Bear Mass. They have one of these in their hand as they're playing with the stick, so it's kind of got this rattle sound while they're playing. Um, so one reason we wanted to include it was because, uh, again, it comes from the same regions uh, of Africa. It comes from Brazil, and it's associated with these instruments. Also, there's four of us, and there's three parts. It makes for, you know, it gives uh, Chris and I something to do, but it also, I think, sort of gives an extra groove for like you guys to lock into and for us to lock into with the music. So, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Nice. Tell us the name of those again. Uh, Kashi Shi, C A X I X I. Are you taking a photo? Okay. So when you take, so when you take a photo, when you take a photo, anytime if you count to three, that's what we say. So one, two, three. Kashi
very happy to be sharing this music with you. It's, uh, it's really, really meaningful. Believe it or not, we're already at number 18, so there are only four more to go. We're going to play them in small sections. We're going to play the next three days. Um, Oshun is the deity of fresh water spirits. Uh, so she is the goddess of rivers and of lakes, and is also considered to be the goddess of fertility. Um, she, her music will make way for the music of another uh, female deity, a warrior deity known as Oba, strong female presence. And finally, in this set, we'll play the music of Obudra, who was the person who took over from Obatala at the point at which he fell asleep on the job due to a certain uh, issue that we had that we described earlier. <laughs> uh, and he ended up being the creator of the earth. And one of the stories in the pantheon is that there was a, a, an endless war between Obudua and Obatala because Obatala was angry that he had taken that from him. And so the only way to resolve that war was for Odua Mare to say to Obatala, okay, okay, you didn't create the earth farm, but we'll let you go create the human beings of the earth. So that was the, that was the training. You'll hear in that music when we get there that the gate of that music is similar to something that we played earlier. Uh, that was the music for that was very similar. similar. Which instrument takes more energy to play? First ask him and then ask me. <laughs> <laughs> so collectively, Jean and I have been playing these instruments for 50 years. Right. I've been playing the Rabina now for a good 25 years, and John the same with these drums. Um, I've been playing these drums for about two and a half, three years now, and John's been playing the Rabina now for about as many years. So what John needs to say is that the way he would answer that is that the Rabina now... The Rabina now wears me out. I can do this all day. And, and my, uh, my shoulders in particular particularly in the, some of the fast music, get very tired doing, doing this over and over again. And it's all a question of endurance, right? When I get to the 25 year mark on these drums, I'm sure I'll be just fine. <laughs> 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 I've, got, I've got 22 more years to go. Just see in 22. Absolutely. We'll start our 73rd birthdays together. <laughs> 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 okay, so Oshun. Goddess of fertility, Oba, warrior goddess, and Ludua, creator, the Erzatz creator, the erstwhile creator. Yeah.
procedure. And as you'll recall, I mentioned that the music of Chang'e was a music that was very virtuosic in nature, very quite quick moving. Um, the, the musical offering that we're about to play um, is a really special one because it's, it's meant to honor uh, the mother of us all. Yamaya is the spirit of the ocean from whence all life came and perhaps for where all life will return. And when we think about the concept and the notion that all of us are connected and the fact that all of our bodies contain at least 70 to 80 percent water, when we can think about you know, what it means to be alive, what it means to be with one another, what it means to be in community, what it means to celebrate uh, things what? through what? the arts, through music, through food. And by the way, if you brought food to the public, thank you so much. That was delicious. <laughs> you know who you are. <laughs> um, right? There's sustenance of all kinds, right? There's, there's physical sustenance, and there's, there's musical sustenance, there's, there's cultural sustenance, there's spiritual sustenance, and all of this comes together in a moment in a moment of celebration like this. So thank you so very, very much for being with us. Um, this is one final musical tribute to uh, to the ocean, to Yamaya. And we'll play it first on the drums, of course, and then we'll invite Christian back up here to join us to play it one more time for you on the Nevada. Remember that when we're done playing um, this last uh, offering, uh, it's your turn. Come on up to the stage <laughs> and grab an instrument. And I'll create a little circle here for anyone who wants to join and play a little bit before you go home tonight. It would make us really, really happy. This music is precious to us, but the instruments are anything but, right? They're meant to be put in your hands. So come on up after, the, after we're done, and, and please don't be shy about that. Okay, here we go. One last thing I want to say about this, okay. Sorry, talk to uh, It starts really slow. Like imagine yourself at the edge of the ocean on the shore before the sun has come up, before the wind has picked up, and the, and the ocean is as calm as can be. And then it goes somewhere out completely different. <laughs>
much are your stickers? <laughs> oh, thanks for asking. Why don't you just have one? It's yours. Everybody will leave you a tip if they can take a sticker. It's an Eclipse sticker, right? There you go. Yeah, it's a, a pay-what-you-will sticker. Yeah. On that note, uh, we do have tote bags and t-shirts and CDs and stickers over there on the table. And it's also, I'd like to say that um, over the course of our time as a nonprofit organization here in Illinois, we've released four albums that are all available on the various streaming services that I'm sure you, you are familiar with, Spotify, Apple Music, <coughs> Amazon Music, etc. And, uh, and if you feel like dropping us a line and staying in touch with us, we'd be thrilled. Um, we have a newsletter that we send out every so often, and you can join that by, by visiting our website, artmusicall.com. John, John, one more, one more okay. thanks to John Thank Taylor, please, for having <laughs>
you also do here? Give me she's like, give me your phone. Okay. Well, I'm getting a bit. You're gonna do that. Yeah.